It's the reconnect. It's David Hua, and he's got the meadow uh, hoodie on, which looks beautiful. Let's be honest. There it is. So, um, you know what? Uh, NCIA coming up on its 10th anniversary. In the industry, since they've been hosting these things, we've been going to that one, right? So, you and I, mostly I, thought it would be a good idea <laughs> to kind of say, all right, here was the industry getting together just like we usually do. Here's what some of the similarities were. Here's what some of the differences were. And here, the key at the end is here's what was missing. Here's what David realized and noticed was missing. So as far as similarities, I would imagine it was very nice to see the same old faces and say hello and the hugs and the kisses and the cannabis industry, of course, is a hugging industry, as we well know, right? Starting there. Sure. I mean, I think, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm down to touch on all of that. <laughs> so, so seeing everybody, obviously, that's the same. Uh, what other similarities ran through at least as much as of the of the thing that you, uh, you know, uh, partook in? Yeah, well, so I went for one of the three days. Uh, the day that I went was Monday, and um, you know, one of the main reasons of going was because NCIA created an afternoon where all the different subcommittees could gather and plan out their strategy for the year and plan out what the initiatives are. Let's dive in. What subcommittee are you on? This is the National Cannabis Industry Association. Everybody yeah, knows. I'm on, I'm on the retail committee. Great. Um, so, you know, we represent a lot of retailers and delivery operators in California and, you know, making sure that they have a place at the table on, under, uh, on, you know, providing feedback and commentary around how things are going. Now, is that CIA um, or NCIA? This is NCIA. So, so they, but it's retail just for California. Oh no, no, no. it's it's retail um, primarily for the. It's a national organization. Right. Uh, I'm coming at it representing uh, our, you know, the the partners that we have in California. Got it. Okay. Um, so it was me and about I think 14 other people. Uh, retailers, uh, other software providers, uh, other service providers, yeah, all across the country. Um, and then, you know, there was the finance committee, the uh, diversity committee, the packaging committee, a lot of things like that. So that's obviously a necessary, you know, uh, piece for you to be a part of. Um, gone are the days though, where David Hua, the CEO can kind of sit in on sessions and kind of learn. Is that true? I did not go to any of the sessions. Actually, I did go to one session, um, which the international, uh, can bar association, um, they had a panel on hemp and, uh, you know, a couple of people that were helping write the bill for 228. Uh, and then the industrial hemp bill here in, in California um, were, were there presenting. And for me, I was trying to understand how the same plant is being regulated under two different regimes um, and then are about to come together legally here in California and understanding the repercussions of that engagement. Real quick, 228, unpack that, make sure that we cover that. Yeah, so AB 228 is a bill that's currently being looked at in, in the committee that allows the infusion of industrial hemp uh, CBD into food products and also allows any license holder within the cannabis, regulated can cannabis supply chain to, to be able to, to grow, sell, manufacture, and distribute you know, uh, cannabis hemp. Same plant being uh, regulated by two regimes. Take us through that. Yeah, well, so the passage of the 2018 Farm Bill uh, really allowed states to create their own structures on growing hemp um, and furthermore extracting CBD and it not being classified as an adulterant. And um, so we're seeing a lot of movement within the hemp world where acres and acres of hemp is being grown, extracted for CBD and being infused into products that are quite frankly being shipped you know, across the country. Um, and, but California is pretty strict on not allowing 
CBD hemp infusions into, or just CBD infusions hemp into food. Um, so it has to be legislated to allow for that. And 228 is that path uh, that op- or is, is the, is what opens up that path. The, uh, <laughs> the, uh, Unbelievable uh, happenstance where uh, the federal government is out ahead of California as far as cannabis legislation. Out ahead, and it's also, you know, way simpler. Uh, when, well, that we believe. That, yeah. <laughs> for, for anything to be simpler than California legislation, we, we believe that. But for the feds to be ahead of uh, California on cannabis, come on. Who would, who would think such a thing? I mean, I am just as... That's why I was at that panel. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Um, what differences, or maybe we can combine the two into, you know, what was missing just by in, in getting together with folks. You, you, you mentioned you had a specific mission of being there. And, and maybe this is more, hey, as I take, pick my head up in the, you know, the beginning of the second half of 2019, um, here's, here's still what I, I see is missing as far as that objective of the reconnect, kind of bringing us all yeah, back um, to the page. You know, people, you know, people that I'm used to seeing in a lot of other events uh, that are no longer here, uh, whether their license lapsed or they had to close down their business or they had to go find something else. Um, You know, obviously there's a lot of new people coming in, um, but it was also good to see still familiar faces that are weathering the storm and and moving ahead. Um, Let's unpack what you're talking about, though. You're talking about, you know, friends and loved ones uh, that were attempting. Community to, members. Yeah. You know, that, community. But that were attempting to be uh, in, you know, uh, regulated cannabis that had probably many years of experience and for some reason are not in as we speak. Is that who we're talking about? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And so that what, what's and probably it? the attention on medical. And the attention on medical, which we will get it's back to in a second. There. We'll get back that, to that in a second. As far as uh, regulations and, you know, speak to Lori Ajax all the time. And we know that she's trying and she's uh, trying to have open arms as far as, uh, you know, everybody in the industry. Um, that is her perspective. What, what can be added to that conversation of, you know, here's what's missing as far as uh, the licensures. Here's what's missing as far as communication where you know, some of my friends and loved ones were trying to be in and they're, they're not in. This is you know, outside of the fact that maybe the, the economics of it all are also wacky. Uh, you know, I'm just talking about licensing and regulations. What are your thoughts? Yeah, well, um, so there are a few thoughts here. Everyone uh, was get granted a temporary permit, uh, but not necessarily, it's not indefinitely renewable. Right. Uh, so it does expire. and if you do not, or if you are not able to secure a provisional license before that expiration, you pretty much have to cease operations. And, um, you know, thankfully the CDPH, uh, the manufacturing really hasn't had a lapse of licensure. Everyone's sort of made through. BCC is also pretty ahead of it now. Um, Whereas you found a lot of cultivators um, are in that boat. So, you know, we had over 9,000 dispense or cultivators, coming into 2018 and now we have really 6,000 plus licenses that have expired uh have expired. 2,500 yep yep uh and then 2,500 that have gone their provisional so you know there's a significant decrease in the number of operators from the cultivation side that's being represented are we saying basically half have lost their licenses Half have not gotten renewed. Uh, sorry, half have not gotten their provisional license. More than half, actually. Have not gotten their provisional les- license. How many of those have been rejected that we know of? I don't, I'm not sure about the rejection numbers. This okay. is you know, in terms well, of just... But I don't have a license to operate right now. I'm half the cultivators. So how do we get them licenses, David Hua, who runs his own business and doesn't regulate cannabis? Well, the AB 97 passed, which allows uh, people with, you know, not requiring a provisional, not requiring a temporary permit to get a provisional. So that will allow the, these regulatory agencies to give the provisionals. Um, it's, it's a matter of resources, uh, process 
testing these applications, uh, you know, figuring out how to work with CEQA and these other organizations are, have pretty high demands on, um, you know, what they what they regulate. BCC is Bureau of Cannabis Control. What's CEQA? CEQA is a California environmental, I think, quality assurance. Fair enough. Uh, they're, so, they're more on the environmental side. So if I'm one of these folks that doesn't have a provisional license, but I have the opportunity to apply for one, or maybe I have applied for one. If I've applied for one, great. Okay, fine. We'll come back to those guys. If I'm just sitting here and I didn't get a provisional license, what can I be doing right now to make sure that I can get back in business? Apply for one? I mean, wait for your... Yeah, I mean, you've, you should have already submitted your application. Now you're yeah, just waiting. Now uh, I'm waiting for you to tell me I have my provisional license and I have to shut operations so that I am doing things by the yeah. rules. Yeah, but it's almost impossible to shut down. I mean, you've already planted. So, so I have my provisional license. Party. I have my provisional license in. You guys yeah. have not rejected it yet. So I'm just going to keep on going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. And so that's where we find I mean, a lot of people is what we're saying. That's why I would, yeah, that's, uh, that's how I would probably see it. Um, hopefully, you know, people get back in um, before harvest. Of course. Um, at the end of the so year. Fingers, yeah, October. So yeah. keep our fingers crossed. Okay. Uh, that's a bummer to say the least, David. Well, you asked me what was missing and that's yeah. what gigantic missing. bummer, gigantic bummer uh, yeah. because it's, and this is why I took the, we took the construct of just a, a, you know, general meeting gathering to speak about the, the bigger uh, issues. And we have certainly located one. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So, I mean, if I, from speaking with Lori, the answer is go, you know, definitely submit your provision for a provisional license if you haven't submitted yet. So fantastic. Okay, fine. And if I'm waiting, I'm, I've already planted, so I got to harvest and we got to see what happens. For the folks that have not applied, go apply, right? For the, for the few folks that have been rejected, have we heard about massive rejections or is this more of a paperwork snafu? I think it's a lot of paperwork. Okay, fine. I'm trying to get through and approved and ch checked off by these other agencies. Okay, all right. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's tough being a cultivator, man. Oh. I mean, I, I, I came into the light. I've been doing this for generations. Uh, you told me to be regulated. I'm regulated. And now you, you let my license lapse from my perspective. Well, what the heck do you want me to do here? Um, and I got plants in the ground. So what, what am I supposed to do? Uh, so yeah, amen. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, we got something to work on. Um, that's a big enough one that we don't need anything else. <laughs> for Pretty me. big. Yeah. yeah. We've been talking about it for a while. Also, yeah. you know, it's a known known, uh, but it's it, it just, it's hard to stomach. Totally. Well, but what also is the problem just now eliminating emotion and personal relationship from it is you've got a whole lot of possible diversion there. Well, yeah, that and also now it's subject to enforcement. Right. Right. Even though you're, you're, you were licensed, you know, two months ago, now you're not, and now you're subject to enforcement. And, right. you know, there's another $113 million being put into enforcement this year. Um, so is there, sure. is, is there maybe a, a, a bill that you know we can consider for when uh, we come back after the summer saying, hey, if you were licensed when you had pl uh, plants in the ground and you have, say it again? Uh, not really. I mean, it's AB 97 that kind of opens it up. There is okay. a path there, but yeah. All right, well, so, but at least I, the cultivator, can point to AB 97. Kinda. Yeah, I mean, some, some jurisdictions aren't, you know, the cannabis community isn't necessarily embraced. Right. The sh you know, sheriffs and enforcement. And I don't okay. know. It's just like uh, what kills me is this uh, prohibition 2.0 mm -hmm. versus having a robust marketplace that allows everyone to compete and allowing more access, quite frankly, because of, you know, lower costs and lower taxes. But All right. We're not so we there. Work to do. We, that's, have, we, that's, we have work to do. Yeah. No, this is serious uh, stuff. This is, uh, these are real issues. 
And what I like about it is it does seem like we've got a regulator that understands what the uh, cannabis economy can be. She is a former prosecutor. If you've got somebody that's trying to obey the rules and uh, gets in trouble, that's not the kind of person that, that, that a prosecutor wants to prosecute, a good prosecutor, you know? So, um, so there we are. Okay, great. Listen, um, hopefully we can make some headway. We'll speak again in a month and, uh, let's, uh, please keep your ears to the ground. You don't really need to. Everybody just talks to you. I'll keep my ears, uh, propped up to listen to you and we'll get the information out that way. How about that? Yeah, I'm down. All right. Listen, uh, it was good seeing you for the four seconds, four to seven seconds that we saw each other. It was nice. We got a good hug. Yeah, it was a good hug. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's all that matters. David Hua, the Reconnect. Thank you so much. We'll see you in about a month. Thank you.